Hi everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Keegan Marazzi and I'm a Partner Solutions Architect at AWS, where my team's goal is to help discover, develop, and deliver solutions with our partners. Today, I'm joined here with Joe Carlson, a Senior Cloud Advocate Developer at Cloud Query. Um, Joe, can you introduce yourself? Hey, my name is Joe, Developer Advocate, uh, and my job is mostly just helping people get better visibility into their cloud infrastructure. Cool. So today we're going to be talking about some of the design considerations when it comes to building a cloud asset inventory at AWS, as well as the common steps that we see companies go through in order to have successful and useful cloud asset inventories. So Joe, let's talk about our scenario. Yeah, let's go through it. So what I see is most engineers fundamentally misunderstand their cloud asset inventory systems is that they approach it as a data collection and engineering problem. But in my humble opinion, it's more of a decision-making and velocity problem for the business and people who are managing the cloud. So I want you to consider a scenario to help make this a little bit more clear. But let's say your security team comes to you because they discovered a critical vulnerability affecting unencrypted databases on the cloud. If you're running a non-existent or a poorly designed cloud asset inventory, in order to answer that question, you might have to take a couple days to go through and manually hunt across spreadsheets, wikis, multiple GUIs and dashboards to find out what your systems might be affected by that. But imagine you have a well-designed, up-to-date, fresh cloud asset inventory system. Uh, you can identify and remediate all of those vulnerabilities in a couple of minutes, because all that data is right there. And the difference here isn't just efficiency. It's a gap between containing a breach and watching it spread out across your infrastructure or become a massive issue. So if how do you build a system that delivers questions you might have about your cloud in seconds and not days? Uh, I've analyzed hundreds of different inventory implementations, and we found that there are every system who is working well at an enterprise level gets five things right. So let's dig into some of the considerations you make for building out your own cloud asset inventory. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about these five design principles you see on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, so the first principle is what we call a freshness mm -hmm. or how current our data is. So the reality is 68% of security incidents require immediate asset visibility, and most teams need sub-five-minute response times to update and address security events. Uh, some of the anti-patterns we see are daily snapshots of security mm -hmm. monitoring. Um, when someone spins up a rogue instance or opens up a security group to the public internet, you can't wait until tomorrow's batch run in order to find out what's going on. Yeah. Principle two, completeness. Um, the question you should be asking yourself is, do we see everything in our cloud environment? AWS, as of the date of the recording, has 240 plus different services that you can access their cloud configuration data with. Um, and your inventory needs to get complete coverage across all these, not just the main ones or a couple of your S3 buckets. Um, we're talking configuration data, your relationships between those different resources, tags, permission, and full metadata depth. Um, I'd say too, just anecdotally, I see 90% of companies I talk to probably have, they say they have 40 to 60% visibility into their cloud. That's still a lot of resources that you don't have eyes on. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point, Joe. So that brings us into our third pillar, which is normalization. Mm -hmm. And the question that's asking is, can we join our data? Mm -hmm. And this is where most systems break because you need schema consistency across different data sources um, and across different accounts that your company manages in order to have a good rounded view of all the different resources in your um, organization. So it could be something as simple as security groups that connect to EC2 instances, or it can be more complex depending on specific teams, tags, and ownership of different resources themselves. So this being said, your data model needs universal keys. Think mm. account ID, think um, the region, whether um, you're just adding more data, you're going to always make sure to make to have a consistent data schema across your cloud asset inventory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. So brings us to the fourth principle, queryability. Ask yourself, can our engineering or the people who need to see this data, can they ask questions about our cloud, our cloud, right? What's going on in it? Uh, I think one of the core here 
I, things here that you should be thinking about is developer experience. Uh, you need to make sure that you're giving your teams, like the business and engineers who are building on the, your AWS cloud, the ability to make ad hoc queries and exploration through you know whatever tools they find most useful. Oftentimes we see that through SQL databases or data warehouses. Um, but they also may need APIs for pro programmatic access integration. It's like webhook integration um, for you know real-time updates or integrating into things like Slack or other alert systems, uh, as well as standardized schemas in order to build them into data pipelines. Awesome, awesome. And that brings us to our final design principle, which is extensibility. So mm -hmm. you need plugin architecture that discover and map new AWS services automatically mm -hmm. when AWS announces them. So whether it be a new service that comes out in reInvent, your cloud asset inventory should be able to track it within days, not within months. So mm -hmm. future, proofing, future proofing means API first design patterns for services that don't exist yet. Mm -hmm. Your data model must handle unknown resource types new relationship patterns and service integrations that you haven't seen before or not using yet. So mm. being able to future-proof your cloud asset inventory is really important, especially when being agile and handling new changes within your organization. So, yeah. Key, so I mean, that reminds me that like the only constant in your cloud is going to be change, right? New requirements, new apps, new things come out, things got to go, things get sunsetted. But being able to like go with the flow on that is super important. All right, cool. So we've talked about the five design principles that we see are really important. If you're considering or starting to build out your cloud asset inventory, I just want to talk a little bit about common steps I see for companies as they're building them out. Most organizations don't just leap right into a golden ivory tower, perfectly built cloud asset inventory. They take some steps. And it's been weird, but I've seen predictable stages, each with like distinct capabilities and limitations and breaking points where they determine they need to go on to the next level. Um, so here's how we've broken down maturity levels and kind of see what your progression through building out a cloud asset inventory might look like. Um, so first rung on our ladder is an ad hoc la layer. This typically comes when you, someone starts asking you questions about the cloud that you can't answer right away. So you have to start getting that data. Maybe you're manually clicking through some of your, your dashboards and trying to figure out all this data. Maybe you've got access to the APIs. So you're just running ad hoc queries on that to get the data to answer those questions. Um, and you know, a lot of that even may be done like in Excel spreadsheets that you're kind of sharing around. If that sounds familiar, you're not alone. I'd say this is where everyone starts out and they're starting to build a cloud asset or they're trying to start answering questions about their AWS cloud environment. Yeah, so that takes us to our next step, which is being repeatable. So you have some scheduled scripts, uh, you have some basic level automation, maybe mm -hmm. a, Lambda, uh, a Lambda script that um, gets information about your cloud infrastructure on a nightly basis, but it's not able to really work for you every single time for different types of scenarios. Mm -hmm. So you don't have things like real-time visibility and you don't have things like relationship mapping. So mm -hmm. any luck or any tries to debug some of your problems in these scripts are going to be really hard challenges. Yeah. And that takes us to the third rung on this ladder. Yeah. So a lot of times people too, they're building their own APIs to go and query that. Um, I think oftentimes people find that maintaining an internal API to be able to answer this question becomes a pain in the butt. APIs change, they break, they need to be maintained, the data endpoints need to be changed, new relationships need to be managed, and that becomes just kind of a pain, right? You wanna be able to focus on delivering features, and this is just a thing that's helping you build a better, more scalable, safer cloud. Um, but that brings us to building up, or looking into managed services. These are more centralized platforms with standardized queries that kind of help you do that. Think like AWS Config or Cloud Query, or you're building out another solution too. Um, but they allow you to answer complex questions about your AWS environment across accounts, across regions, and allows you to track changes over time. Um, but you can actually go a little bit further than that. Yeah, and uh, from our experience, we've seen companies that have really advanced uh, invent asset systems, mm -hmm. invent um, asset inventory systems, and uh, we call that and categorize it as the optimized tier. So you have real time decision making with predictive analytics. So your inventory doesn't just tell you what happened; it tells you what will happen, mm -hmm. and it enables you to make changes based on past trends and history of your organization and your asset utilization. So um, we're not talking just addressing the current problems, but identifying the problems that might happen in the future. Mm. And this is really the gold tier that we 
have seen in our experience for companies managing their assets and their infrastructure on AWS. So this kind of encapsulates the different stages and different levels of cloud asset inventories. Mm -hmm. And um, a good inventory architecture starts with the principles that we discussed over here. So it's making sure that you have fresh current data um, you have a well-rounded view of that data, so it encapsulates not only your specific infrastructure, your core components, but also the minor uh, different configurations between um, your deployments. But you know, it could also, and it should include things like your test accounts and um, your experimentation accounts that you have engineers working on, so you have a, a well-rounded view. Next, we have normalization, which just makes sure that all of our data is joined and that we don't have any breaks in the styles of data. Uh, next, we have queryability, so the ability to search that data, find and get insights on it. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we have extensibility, which, as I said before, is future-proofing the data, making sure that uh, we're able to have room for new services that we don't account for, um, and being able to change quickly. So